Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Today is your choice. We asked you recently in a YouTube poll which dream theater song we should do first on the channel, and your answer was Metropolis Part 1. So that's what we're going to do. In reading a little bit about this, I found it incredibly amusing to see that this was not actually intended as a multiple part sort of thing. It was called Metropolis Part 1, The Miracle and the Sleeper, as a bit of a joke from John Petrucci, their guitar player. And then the fans really insisted, saying, oh, we want a part two. Come on, give us a part two. So really fun tidbit there. I have heard Dream Theater once before. It was on a patron playlist. It was a very um, beautiful and heart-touching song. It was called The Answer Lies Within. Just, I remember being... Uh, having some tears during that song it was really gorgeous. But this is going to be my first time seeing them perform live. Let's get to it. briefly about this intro. Uh, obviously, we haven't had any vocals yet, but uh, there's a couple things to mention. The first is my first impression. Oh, great. Great. Perfect. I got it right on. My first impression upon seeing this drum kit is why in the world would you need so many drums? <laughs> like, Do you use all of this? Uh, but I, this is also, I think, forward in my attention because it's very interesting to hear the different kinds of percussion bits that uh, are being pulled out here. It's like we have, um, I know I heard like a little bit of like even some chimes at one point and there was like one little boop that made me laugh and there's a shaker. I think that there's some sort of tambourine perhaps. And it's very interesting also how these have been mixed in headphones. Um, you know, however they've mic'd the things on stage, taking that sound and then putting it into a sound we listen to on headphones is, uh, it's a very different experience than what we might have experienced there live in the audience. And I think it's interesting how they've chosen to mix these instruments together. Uh, if you don't have a good set of headphones, I recommend getting one and listening to that spatialization because it's such an interesting and uh, an important choice for how the band wants to present their sound. It, it can like, how do you feel like maybe you were on stage with them? Like, how, what, how are you going to present that spatially to somebody who's just listening on headphones? Uh, really, really cool. Let's go back a little bit and listen to all of those like little, it's like little bits of percussion candy. So you go like, like a tambourine and a shaker here. a wood block in there. There's some chimes. There's a kick going. There's a lot happening in the progression. And then a lot more. guys uh all have really awesome amazing long hair and i like the the like wizard beard thing that keyboardist has going on i'm gonna have to go back and remember his name again too because i'm these guys are new to me i know james labrie 
I know um, John Petrucci. I think Mike is the drummer. I will look at my notes. Here, who is our, who's our other people? Mike Mangini is a drummer. Jordan Ruddus is a keyboardist. He's the guy that's got the wizard beard and hat going on. And John Myung on bass. Wow. That four J names, one M name. Okay. Whew. It's a lot to try and remember with the first time with the band, guys. interesting to hear how they're um, building up with these guitarists. There's some energy building up. It sounds like you've got a minor chord and then it goes to a major chord and back minor, major, major, minor, major. Um, it's a very interesting build and I like the guitarists. Um, well, it's guitar and bass that are playing it. It's very hummable, very sing backable. Cool percussion sound. I expect you to sing this with me. You with it? Here we go. I want you to know that I feel guilty for not being able to sing with him. It is, I don't know this song. So, uh, yeah, anytime I'm watching one of these with you and, and they say, sing along with me, I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, I don't know it yet. Okay, so when you go to concerts, if you're seeing a band that you know and love, try and memorize their words. I've spoken to lots of singers now in interview series, and they say, memorize the words and sing along with us at concerts. That's a very common theme. So sorry, I can't sing along with you this time. Maybe when I see you live. I expect you to sing this with me. You with it. Here we go. That's a cool sound. Like his voice was more beautiful and the answer lies with it. So this is James Abri. Uh, I've like, um, yeah, I haven't heard him like in this uh, sort of more uh, grandiose texture before. And he's really good with his rhythm um, and making it sound smooth when it's not necessarily a super smooth rhythmically line. Uh, that's That's interesting to me. It also sounds like it's sitting in a spot that's kind of awkward. I think it's around there. Yeah. So this is, this is sitting kind of like in this high awkward zone for a lot of men to sing in. And it sounds like he's doing some good vowel modification there to adjust to that. I'm going to go back. Oops. Okay. Let's go back here. Oh, I love that. I love that synth choice. It's so spacey and goofy and fun. I'm going to mention this before you start singing, listen for it. This, maybe that's what it is. That, but the percussion and the riff that's happening underneath it, I like that they keep it fairly static when his voice first enters. It really lets the voice take center stage when I feel like there could be so much more going on in the instruments, especially with the percussion. There's like tons of extra things they can do to draw attention and spice it up. But at this moment when the voice is entering, they kind of need to get out of the way and let the voice take center stage, which is smart.
uh, so with his vocal styling, I've heard ways that people could take this and make it um, a lot more, uh, like I would say, have like more dynamics or more range of vocal expression where you have like more growls in it or um, more texture. I do hear some distortion that he's doing every now and then, which is kind of cool, adds it in there. But this feels like more progressive in nature where keeping something a little bit more simple might help us to appreciate the overall feeling of the piece. I'm really curious where it's gonna go, if that's gonna be something he sticks with, if he was just keeping it simple for the intro, I don't know. Um, but ultimately, uh, it sounds almost like the voice is not looking to be that center stage. It, it does look to be a melody and words that people can sing and relate to but it's not looking to like be the focus of the song. Um, it almost reminds me a little more of Opeth in some ways. Anyhow, let's keep going. I was told there's a miracle for each day that I try. I was told there's a new love that's born for each one that has died. I was told That was not kept super simple. So I think we're definitely trying to be, bring the voice more center here. And maybe the initial one was like, hey, sing along. This is sort of like our neutral zone. And then right here, he got a lot more breathy in the tone quality down there. And he even got like, like really some nasal bite, like got some crazy like meow in the sound. Um, so we're gonna go back a little bit. Let's talk about some of the different ways he's making these sounds. <laughs> I, when I look at the lyrics and how they're organized, um, it's really interesting. Death is the first dance eternal is, um, is sort of like the end of one of the stanzas of the lyrics. And then you have and a new stanza. There's no more freedom. The both of you will be confined to this mind. And that's where we just start, stopped now. And it feels like that's almost like a bridge of material, but it's actually in the next stanza, which continues into I was told. Um, I feel like there's some really interesting like perspectives that these lyrics can have. Um, I feel like there's a ton of interpretations. Even when I read through them the first time, I thought, wow, I have no idea what they're gonna do with this. This sounds like the interpretations are endless. Um, and by the way, if you hear tons of wind coming in, it's because I believe uh, the, the clouds are about to break open and rain down. And you know what? We are just going to listen to good music through it and it will take us away to a far and dreamy land and it will be incredible. So um, I like the smile of dawn arrived in early May and the heavens broke open. And so she carried a gift from her home. I think it's so interesting. We have she in here already. She'll never outgrow. Dance is the first or death is the first dance eternal. And then you have you come in in the next stanza and confine to this mind. And then there's I. And so we already have tons of different perspectives. So that very first one uh, that had like a more simple tone coming from James Labrie, I wonder if that was like more of a narrator's tone. And then all of a sudden here, I think this is where we get this more breathy tone on I. It feels like it becomes more personal. And all of a sudden he's saying, I was told there's a miracle. That makes sense for it to become more personal. And it makes sense for the voice to take a different kind of tone quality, a different kind of center stage at this moment. I was told there's a miracle. Right, very different person. I was told there's a new love that's born for each one that has died. I was told. Ah, some really
really good things to discuss in there vocally. So uh, he uh, he's modifying his vowels in a very smart way because, again, it's going up into this really um, bizarre, uncomfortable area uh, in men's voices, particularly it's like a passaggio. And he's having to go through this zone of transition, essentially. And when you get up very high, too, in a full voice, you can't sing a true vowel and make it sound really good. Um, so you have to modify and essentially open up your mouth more. So uh, dream is a really good example. If he sings an E vowel up there, it's above where that formant sounds the best. So uh, essentially, instead of singing dream, the way to modify it is just to drop the john. So instead of dream, you sing dream or even dram. So it can go towards an E eh or even an A ah vowel. Vowel modification is very complicated, so uh, I won't talk too extensively about this, but I think it's very interesting that he uses it a lot and that helps him negotiate and still sound like the same voice throughout all of these registers. And then additionally, he goes really snarly and swimming in a lake of fire. You'll find yourself slamming and like on a low note, he really brings out the twang, really points it right here in the sound, bringing out some more nasality in it. And I think that's interesting because the phrase swimming in a lake of fire, right? That's kind of um, vengeful, right? It's, it's pretty intense. So I like that he brings a more intense sound to that. Let's go back just a little bit. Each day that I try, I was told there's a new life that's born. There's dream. Notice it doesn't sound like a true eval dream. It's a little more open. On, what are they talking about there? This is so interesting. I'm not really sure what's going on. Hey. Oh, those are cameramen. Uh, got it. I thought that <laughs> from that angle, it looked like the uh, they were chatting with James about something. Like, oh no, just you're like your mic is about to fall out or something. Hey. What the He's really there with the audience, tossing the words out as much as possible. Um, th this is a really hard range to get words out in, and I keep hearing him modify the vowels in a very, very smart way. Um, I really dig also, um, like he even did like a hand motion out at one point, saying like, we're gonna toss this out. A little bit kind of a la Bruce Dickinson, the way he's um, tossing that voice out there. Really a very interesting, um, I think successful delivery, especially because there's just so much happening in here. It's kind of hard to follow the story. I feel like this is the kind of song I can listen to over and over and over and still not fully understand. And trying to understand it and the first time through with you guys is difficult. So yeah, I went back just a little bit. Let's go from here. Harmonically and rhythmically, I I often am feeling like, ah, there's home, like where home meaning sort of the tonic, so wherever the root key is, like, oh cool, yeah, there I am. And then just 
a few seconds later, often there'll be something that causes me to feel like, oh, is that home though? And then it shifts and goes to a new place. And that happens in the rhythm too. I'll be going like one, two, three, four, and then all of a sudden I'll feel like a, a time signature shift. And there's so much to catch here. It really does almost feel dreamy in the way that when you're inside of a dream, you might try to grasp onto things, but the moment you look away, you they change, they modulate, um, and and you're you look back and you're in a new place. It's really fascinating. I like the way everything is weaving together, and it's a almost a well to use use the word that they just used. It's a very eluding kind of experience. Back a little bit. <laughs> Wow, okay, this might be one of those moments where we get to go back and take a look at these time signatures because I think we had, I think we had at least four within the last 30 seconds. Yeah, definitely. So a lot of times like you'll feel, oh, one, two, three, four. We're used to looking for one, two, three, four beats. Uh, just a standard four, four time. It's called common time because it's the most common time signature that's used. We hear it in pop music all the time. Most music is written in four, four time. But every now and then what they're doing is adding in extra beats here and there, which is really fun. And you count one, two, three, four. And then I feel like I want to have another downbeat Downbeats are usually the strongest beat within a set of beats. So that's often where we know to start our counting from. But I'll feel that there's almost a lift, and so it doesn't give the downbeat when expected. And so maybe we've got a 5-4 that enter there or a 6-4 that enter there. So there was an extra beat or two. Or sometimes what they'll do is actually change time signature and give us like a measure or like a sort of an extra section in there before returning to a 4-4, which could be happening here. See if we can analyze it a little bit. It's it's very complicated and you don't hear the time signatures often continuing on, so you don't have a lot of time to try and latch on to something. It's purposely evasive. For something else, two, three, four. Three, four, something else, two, three, four. Oh, there's another one. So you had a one, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six cut in there in the middle as well. Oh man, I feel like we could spend a very long time analyzing all those little details of the time signatures in there. I'm not going to do that right now. We're going to keep going. Otherwise, this video overall is going to be two hours long. But it's pretty awesome. I like the way that they do weave in and out so quickly and so fluidly. Okay, I think this was a 7-4. We're gonna go back. It was like, I swear it was 7-4 for a little bit. This is like, this is one of those puzzles that my music brain is like, I wanna figure it out. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Yeah, so I'm counting one and two and three and one and two and three and oh, one and two and three and that's one way you can count it. 
there's a, there's a couple different ways you could possibly count this. So knowing for sure what they've written on sheet music. Um, so basically you can sort of like merge time signatures together. So a seven, four could be like a three, four and a four, four rather than a seven, four together. I'm not sure exactly what they have here, but counting it as one and two and three and one and two and three and uh, works pretty well. That's fine. Doubled in the keys and guitar? Whoa. Okay, that was super fast. And I don't know if the whole thing was doubled, but it definitely looked like the end part was doubled. Coordinating that would be absolutely insane. I that's that's crazy to me. Uh, first of all, like it's just that guitar solo slash maybe duet, the fingers are moving so quickly on that. That's really crazy difficult. And then uh, additionally, to get that timing correctly with another person, oh man, that's nuts. I, I really like the sounds they've chosen too. It's like, uh, it feels it feels very much vintage video game. Let's keep going. <laughs> That moment, I feel like was uh, Mike. His name was Mike, right? It started within him. It was his uh, answer, his challenge accepted to me of, does he even use all of those drums? So perfect. Uh, noted, he does seem to use them all. I don't know how he keeps track of them all, but it's very impressive. <laughs> Wait, I need that transition. come back to that like pow, 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 that moment it sounded so cool um i i liked it it um it was set apart right we had just the guitar in that moment it felt like it was so central and important i'm hoping they bring it back later because it felt like something i'd really love to hear them build on um oh more forward here here oh yeah drum fun Here we go. I like that. It's so sticky. How can one phrase be sticky like that? are going to build on it. I like that. It like really stuck with me right away. Um, now it sounds like they're going to make something off of it. Um, 
So I liked that in this section, they also were taking this musical scale and it sounded like they're taking chords on the scale and going up it. Boop, 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 boop. It's not chromatic. I think it's built on a scale itself. And that uh, ascending chords builds a lot of anticipation. It was really fun to hear the bass riff on top of that too. But right now I'm just super excited. They brought that little blip back and we're about to hear what they do with it. Uh, let's go back a little bit. I keep misjudging this, so here. Oh, oh, and there's also orchestra, stra orchestra stabs in it, which is very much like an action scene. So this would be like, think about um, action scenes from your uh, favorite, uh, Marvel movie. A lot of times you have orchestra stabs that feel like um, they're done at unusual times, can make an audience feel a bit off kilter, like, whoa, was there a punch thrown in that direction or that one? Whoa, what's happening? So those orchestra stabs are a really good way of also building up anticipation. Here we go. Ascending chords and stabs. is amazing. I loved um, hearing guitar and keyboard together with this. That, again, I'm amazed at how well they've coordinated it. Sometimes they're playing the same notes, sometimes they're harmonizing together. It's like, it is so cool and it's so video game. <laughs> I love it. Okay, let's go back again. Listen to this. Oh, back a little further. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Uh, this sounds jazzy in a lot of ways. You have a lot of like really colorful notes that have been chosen in here and very unexpected. It's, uh, I really have respect for how they've chosen these notes, coordinated them ahead of time, chosen where to harmonize and where to keep it unison. And it, these aren't things that you would just be like, yeah, let's play a scale down. Like these are unusual notes a lot of times. That's part of what makes it feel jazzy. There's like sort of like grace notes in there that touch on a more colorful note and come back to one that maybe feels more standard. And uh, for that reason, I'm sitting here thinking, how long did it take these guys to write this section? That to me would take a ton of time. You look at each other and you say, uh, what was that pattern you were doing? And you're like, oh, well, I mean, can I just outline all the notes? But there's a lot of them, so we're gonna need to write them all down. I don't, I don't even know what their process is. Do they put it on sheet music and play together? I don't know. But that was crazy awesome. Crazy, crazy awesome. <laughs> That was fun. They had like, a, like the hint of the transition coming in ahead of time, um, just like a, a little hint of it. And then it, the whole band switched to follow that. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs>
I love that they basically took an ostinato and then transformed it into something else, something new. Like this is something you would see Philip Glass do in an opera, but this is metal, right? This is metal still, I think. Um, maybe a little bit of rock in there, but I think metal is a subdivision kind of of rock. Anyhow, genres are very interesting and crossover in many ways. Um, but so essentially there's this ostinato that's set up. An ostinato is a repeating pattern that you see. It's often kept in the bass, and then there's sort of like things that are done on top, like riffs that are done or a solo that's done on top. So this, in this case, the keyboardist establishes this ostinato and you see him totally loving it. He's jamming out. I love the smile and like, he's just bobbing with it. It's fun. And so uh, he establishes an ostinato that is very interesting too. It is not a boring ostinato by any means. And then you hear, um, you hear it taken over in different ways. Um, sometimes the rhythm is played with in one, uh, with the percussion and you have it also taken over into the guitar and develops a little bit there, or the guitar does a solo on top of it and then sort of like dips into it at some points. It's so interesting how they'll take a musical element and dip into it, maybe all join into it at one point and then shift it and mold it into something else. This is, um, this feels like the definition of progressive music because of the way it progresses and shifts and molds over time. It's fascinating. I really like this moment, especially when the keyboardist builds the ostinato. So we're gonna go back to it here. Oh, oh, that's it. That's the ostinato right there. You can hear the drums have joined in and they started adding their own thing. Oh, oh, cool. I didn't even catch it the first time. The first time he riffs on top of that, he does a major riff, and then he switches it to a minor one to give extra flavor. It's fascinating. Oh, minor, like, oh, something's weird. to me felt like like a metal version of Mario and Mario was like went down like you heard like a like little um sort of chromatic scales going down a few different times like he was dropping down into probably some underworld thing and then he was like yeah I got a thing oh no I died at right there I don't know maybe you guys didn't hear this too but it makes me giggle so I was dropping down there that thing it feels like okay well maybe next time you can try this level again but you just died okay i'm gonna keep whoa I feel like maybe we're getting back to something at the beginning. It sounded like we sort of just returned from this big solo world moment. Uh, all of the keyboard choices for which sense he's using are really fun to me. I like them. They're bouncy. I feel a lot of um, lightness in them. They definitely have like a retro vintage sound happening, very electronic, very much video game. Uh, and it's interesting to me to hear this paired with uh, an electric guitar that has this really long sound. It's like the keyboard brings in um, 
a bounciness that is reminiscent of the drums. It adds a lot more percussiveness to it. It also reminds me of the fun that you can have when playing around with instruments in DAWs. I know in Logic there's a specific instrument called Sculpture where you can sort of play with modeling that and make it have more bounciness or choose different kinds of materials. So it just seems like the keyboardist has a ton of fun choosing the different synth sounds that he made. And we'll even just like bring in one little one just for a couple moments and then switch to another one. It's fun, it's just fun. Fun bouncy. Oh yeah, we have a singer. <laughs> that was an awesome instrumental in our Grateful you made tonight a huge success. This is amazing. We've been coming down here for quite some time, and it just keeps getting bigger and better. We'll see you again. We will keep coming back as long as you will have. I just wanted to know. I didn't know he had an accent until just now. What was the, he's, he's from the South? He's got an accent. Okay. That's all right. Muchos gracias. Huh. Still got a little more for you. Oh. So jazzy. Wow! Okay, so he does this arpeggio up. That's like where you're kind of going over a pattern. It's one, three, five, eight, essentially in the piano. That is really hard to do really quickly with accuracy. He just blasts it out. Like this guy could play Rachmaninoff concerto, no problem. That was beautiful, beautiful piano technique. Obviously he's doing crazy good job with all of these fast runs, but Arpeggios tend to cover a lot of ground on the piano very quickly. They need to be very precise. That was fantastic. Here it is, right there. Wow. I remember practicing arpeggios like crazy in high school and my wrists got so tight. It's like a really good way to develop tendonitis. Um, and I love the, like, it just seems so effortless and breezy in his hands. Cool. drum kind of uh, influence here. This feels like uh, somewhere in the Caribbean. This is cool. What a cool fun sound. Like who would have thought that we'd go from like weird metal Mario to Caribbean in this amount of time? <laughs> Whoa. So much hair. If I didn't know better, I would say this was like a, a Caribbean or a South American jazz band pretending to play metal at this point because it just feels so jazzy and and it has this like extra element. I It's just fun. It's fun. It's so fun to hear them like dive into a sound and really thoroughly explore it. Kudos. It's, I love this exploration of music. Wow. Oh. 
back to Dreamland. in here first of all great vowel modification on that entrance and sort of before the leaves it's before the leaves have fallen so really opening his mouth more on that e vowel again because it's in that high awkward zone um additionally i really like hearing um the way he is playing with the grit adding and taking it away um, i like the extra texture that can bring to the sound and then harmonically it's very interesting that when he sings the word home the band does not go back to where we would think home was at that point. Um, so the tonic essentially moves, the key modulates right when he says home. So it's like, we're not really sure where home is. So when it says she's taking you to your home, you're like, ah, yeah, but I have a question about home. I think that's such an interesting choice to make musically. Let's go back. Right there, that shift is just so interesting. That is very, very deliberate to go with that one. I feel like I wasn't quite ready for this to end. Um, listen to how he sings Sleeper in particular. Sleeper is a great example of another place where he's opening his mouth up more for that vowel mod. Oh, need to go back further. One more. Here we come up. There. Slash. I love, I said I wasn't ready for it to end. Apparently they weren't either. This play out is one of my favorite play outs I've ever seen. I love the way that Mike is like, hey, I'm just gonna put one stick in my mouth because I'm gonna use a hand for part of them and then stick for the other one. And the guys are just looking at each other like, how much how much more can we play? And of course, James Sapria is like, ugh, dudes, dudes, the song's over. <laughs> He's just like laying on that mic stand. The personalities here are hilarious. Let's watch this play out one more time. Oh, look at that drumstick and mouth. It's great. It's fantastic. And look at him and his, uh, like, okay, this could go on for hours still. <laughs> it's hilarious. Oh, no, back further. Oh my goodness, that's a long play out.
I will use all the drums. I will use all the drums. <laughs> <laughs> that song is very long and very delightful. I feel like the time really flew by because there's so much to sink your teeth into, right? Like all kinds of cool time signatures, really cool sounds. The thing that I loved the most was how they would go with an idea and then really dig deep into it and explore it and execute the idea with so much technical proficiency. It's nuts, just like, wow, these guys are really good. And I like that we have this like big story of the metropolis that's going across. So you have the idea maybe of a really busy city and lots of different kinds of cultures maybe represented in that city, lots of different things you could come across. And it was really sweet message wise to wrap it up with this idea of love, um, is the dance of eternity. I thought that was a nice way to bring it together. The lyrics had so much more to unpack than I even could barely brush the surface of. So if you guys have a really good insight into what you think those lyrics are about or fun interpretations of them, I'd love to read about that in the comments. Thank you to everyone for suggesting this. This was such a fun dip into dream theater. This was really, really good. So please keep making suggestions down below. Let me know what else you would like to hear. And you can find me here every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. Arizona time. You can also find me on Patreon. We have an awesome community. And uh, if you wanna be like a big supporter of the com community, you should totally buy our merch. We just released it. There should be a banner below the video with some of that merch. And also, if you just wanna learn about music in general or about singing, I have courses about that at thecharismaticvoice.com. I'll see you somewhere soon.